Welcome back, traders. Let's get started with the major types of order blocks. The first type is the standard order block. In a bearish scenario, the standard order block refers to the zone corresponding to the last bullish candle before a sharp and substantial downward movement. The theory behind considering these zones as potential reversal areas is based on the belief that they represent manipulation areas formed just before a significant market movement. Traders view these zones as areas where a large number of buy or sell orders have been executed. Therefore, by using these zones in our trading strategy, we can potentially take advantage of the high probability of price reversal and change in direction when it reaches these areas. In this example, we see that after the formation of the last bullish candle, the price experienced a sharp downward movement, leaving behind a significant inefficiency in the market. However, the price eventually retraced back up, filling the liquidity voids that were created during the downward move. As a result, the order block in question was mitigated, indicating that the market participants have successfully filled their buy orders. Subsequently, the price reversed once again and continued its downward movement. The second type of order block is known as the primary impulse order block. This type of order block occurs when the price fails to initiate a strong or significant movement after changing its primary direction. In the bearish scenario, the primary impulse order block is identified as the first weak bearish candle that forms just before a significant downward movement. It represents a point where the market exhibited a lack of momentum in continuing its previous bullish trend, potentially indicating a reversal or a change in market sentiment. Let's take a look at an example. In this chart, we have a downtrend where the price created a bearish break of structure by breaking below the previous lower low, leaving an inefficiency behind. To identify the most recent order block generated by the price, we can focus on the first weak bearish candle that formed before the significant downward movement. This candle represents the primary impulse order block, indicating a potential reversal or change in the market direction. It is an area of interest where the price may reverse when it reaches that level, providing a high probability trading opportunity. The third type is wick-based order block. In the bearish scenario, a wick-based order block occurs when the shadow or wick of the last buying candle or the first weak bullish candle is greater than half the size of the entire candle. In this pattern, only the wick of the candle is considered as the order block, disregarding the candle's body. This manner provides an optimized and smaller zone compared to the considering the entire candle size as our area of interest. As you can see here, price sharply pushed to the downside and created a series of bearish BOSs. So it's clear that this candle located at the extreme is the first weak bearish candle formed before price created a sharp downside movement. But as you can see, the wick of the candle is greater than half of the whole candle. As we mentioned before, we should highlight the entire wick is our order block instead of the entire candle size. So, let's move into the next order block type, engulfed order block. In a bearish scenario, a bearish engulfed order block occurs when the last bullish candle's entire body is completely engulfed by the subsequent candle, indicating a strong influx of selling pressure that overwhelms the buying momentum, followed by a sudden and significant downward movement. In the given example, we see a shift in market dynamics as price breaks out of this structure to the downside, signaling a change of character from the previous uptrend. The candle we are focusing on is the last bullish candle formed before the bearish movement. Its entire body is engulfed by the following bearish candle, indicating a strong bearish momentum. Upon closer inspection, it becomes apparent that the wick of this bullish candle is greater than half the size of the entire candle. This raises the question, should we classify this pattern as a wick-based order block, focusing solely on the wick as our area of interest, or should we consider it an engulfed order block, highlighting the entire candle? In this specific case, it is recommended to treat it as an engulfed order block and consider the entire candle as the area of interest, rather than solely focusing on the wick. Let's see the next order block type, breaker block. Breaker block is a failed order block that has been broken through and turned into another supply or demand area on the chart. As you know, guys, market could ignore the order block supply and demand for many reasons, including a shift in market structure, being overvalued or being oversold, tapping into the higher time frame key levels, or resting key liquidity zones just below or above the order block. 
When a valid order block fails to reject the price and price breaks through it, it becomes a supply or demand level, which we call it breaker block. Breaker block is usually most effective when price breaks through it with large momentum candles with a tiny pullback to it. Let's see an example. As you can see, price pushed to the upside and has broken out this order block with large momentum candles and also left great inefficiency behind. In the following, we can see that price eventually pushed back down to fill the inefficiency. And also it's clear that price, after mitigation of the breaker block, sharply pushed to the upside. Also, price ignored this standard order block, which was located at the extreme. So, let's move into the last order block type, mid-movement pivot order block. It refers to the formation of an opposite colored candle within the midst of a strong bullish or bearish movement. This candle acts as a potential reversal signal. It signals the potential for a reversal or a temporary pause in the current market direction. The psychology behind that we consider these zones as potential reversal areas, where price has a tendency to reverse and change direction upon reaching them. They serve as important signals, indicating a possible loss of momentum or a consolidation phase in the prevailing trend. Consequently, we monitor these zones in the market as potential reversal zones that require close attention. Traders, we have thoroughly covered the major order blocks that frequently appear on real price charts, enabling us to develop a solid understanding of how to identify them. Now, in the following section, we will explore the entry models that can be incorporated into our trading plans using order blocks. These entry models will serve as effective tools for executing trades based on the insights gained from order block analysis. But before diving into the entry setups, it's important to note a crucial step in your trading journey, backtesting your strategies. Before using a strategy or a setup in a real account, it's recommended to backtest it at least 100 times. Various factors like market conditions, trader psychology, sessions, risk management, and time frame influence a strategy's win rate. Backtesting helps traders gain insights and enhance their trading strategies. There are four primary types of entries that we can employ when executing trades using order blocks. The selection of a specific entry type depends on various market factors, such as the market's movement, sessions, volatility, and other relevant factors. By considering these factors, we can choose the most suitable entry type for executing trades effectively. The first entry method involves using the wicks to execute trades. In this type of entry, after identifying a valid order block, we place our buy or sell order directly on the wick. In the case of a sell position, we will place our stop loss a spread size above the higher wick of the order block. This entry setup provides a wider stop loss margin, which can directly impact the reward to risk ratio by reducing it. However, using this type of entry increases the probability of your order being triggered since price may simply touch the wick and then push in your expected direction. The second entry type is referred to as the body entry. In this approach, once a valid order block is identified, the entry is placed based on the body of the candle. For sell positions, the stop loss is set to a spread size above the higher wick of the order block. This entry method typically offers a higher reward to risk ratio compared to the previous entry type because the stop loss is tighter. This approach carries a slightly higher level of risk. There is a possibility that price may only touch the wick of the order block and then move in the anticipated direction without triggering your buy or sell order. Consequently, that there is a chance of missing out on a potentially profitable trade opportunity. Let's move to the next entry type. The third type of entry, which I personally prefer and utilize more frequently in my trading plan, involves placing the entry at the midpoint of the order block zone once a valid order block is identified. In the case of a bearish scenario, the stop loss is positioned a spread size above the highest point of the order block. This entry type offers a reward to risk ratio that is at least twice as large as the regular entry types mentioned. This is due to the refined entry point and the smaller size of the stop loss. This is precisely why this entry type holds a special place as my favorite approach. By employing this approach, we can potentially enhance the profitability of our trades while effectively managing risk. The fourth entry type involves placing the entry based on the body of the candle once a valid order block is identified. In sell positions, the stop loss is set to touch the higher wick of the order block. 
This entry type is undoubtedly riskier because the stop loss is positioned within the order block zone. If the price intends to fully reverse the order block, it may trigger the stop loss. It's important to be aware of the increased risk associated with this entry type and carefully consider its suitability within your trading strategy. Let's delve into the rules and criteria for identifying high-quality order blocks in the market. There are four essential rules that we must follow in order to identify order blocks with a high probability of success. Rule number one states that a high-quality order block must leave a significant inefficiency behind. Inefficiency refers to an imbalance between buyers and sellers in the market, resulting in a disequilibrium that needs to be filled. This is often observed as a gap within the candles. To clarify, let's consider two scenarios. If a three-candle sequence does not exhibit any gaps, it is considered an example of efficiency. On the other hand, if there is a gap present within the candles, it signifies an example of inefficiency. Rule number two emphasizes that a high-quality order block must lead to a break of structure or a change of character in the market. Break of structure and change of character are essential signals that indicate whether the market will continue in its initial direction or will experience a reversal. Rule number three, price must sweep a liquidity zone before reaching the order block. By requiring the price to sweep a liquidity zone before reaching the order block, traders can increase the reliability and validity of the order block as a potential turning point or area of interest. This rule ensures that there is sufficient market participation and confirmation of the order block's significance before considering it for trading decisions. Liquidity is a zone on the chart where a large pool of money is resting, such as stop losses and buy or sell orders. When a trader gets stopped out of a position, the market absorbs the funds associated with that stop loss. The market continually seeks to absorb this liquidity to generate momentum. Essentially, Liquidity serves as the lifeblood of the market, playing a vital role in its overall dynamics and functioning. It is often speculated that central banks or large financial institutions may manipulate the market, creating scenarios that deceive traders into believing they have a clear understanding of price action. It's crucial to understand that if price sweeps a liquidity zone before reaching our identified order blocks, then we can consider that order block as a zone with a higher probability of success. The underlying theory is that the market relies on liquidity to sustain its movement. If the price fails to sweep liquidity before reaching an order block, there's a greater chance that the price will utilize that zone as a source of liquidity to propel its momentum. It's essential to consider this aspect when identifying potential entry points in the market as it can significantly impact our trading decisions and outcomes. Here, in this example, we can see two bullish breaks of structures to the upside leading to the formation of two distinct bullish order blocks. After a minor reaction from the upper order block, the price experienced a downward push to sweep the liquidity accumulated below the order block and also the equal lows. The reason for price not reversing from the upper order block is the absence of a liquidity sweep pattern prior to reaching it. Consequently, the price utilized that zone as a source of liquidity, propelling its momentum. On the contrary, the reversal from the extreme order block can be attributed to the liquidity being swept below the upper order blocks and equal lows. By sweeping liquidity, the price gathered momentum and acquired the necessary fuel to move upwards. Upon reaching the order block, the price promptly reversed and made a significant upward move to sweep the buy side liquidity. Thus, the extreme order block presented a higher probability of success in terms of trading opportunities. Rule number four, it must be unmitigated. Order blocks are considered one-time use, meaning we focus on the trading opportunity when price first enters an order block. Once an order block has been mitigated, we do not consider it as an area of interest for future trading. Because once an order block has been mitigated, meaning that price has moved beyond its boundaries and the inefficiency has been resolved, it loses its significance as a trading area. Subsequent retests of the order block may not yield the same trading opportunities as the initial entry. That's it, traders. In this episode, we have fully covered the essential aspects of order blocks, including how to accurately identify them in the market and recognize high-quality order blocks. Additionally, we have explored different entry types that can be employed with order blocks. In future episodes, we will delve into advanced order block entry models and trading strategies. Stay tuned for more exciting insights. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and useful.
Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay updated on our latest videos. We value your feedback and suggestions, so please leave your comments below and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover in our future videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next episode.